I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. This is Matt once again. What about to another review? This is another PayPal request for Grade B. Uh, thank you so much for that. If anyone's ever interested in requesting reviews or any other type of videos, if you do so either directly via my PayPal or join me on my Patreon, the links are down below in the info box. If not, no worries, but if so, thank you. And the film you wanted me to talk about today is Midway from 2019, which there was a Midway back in the day with Charlton Heston and such, but this is the one directed by Roland Emmerich. And of course, it talks about there was an attack on Pearl Harbor and then what happened immediately after with the Battle of Midway, where the Americans fighting the Japanese. This is one of those films that honestly was kind of hard for me to sit through. Because A, it felt very long. B, a lot of the sequences very heavy on digital work. I mean, it's Roland Emmerich and now a day's most of his films do that. Whether it be and you know, some I've enjoyed. I mean, the more fantastical stuff I've enjoyed, like twenty twelve and even yeah, I liked White House Down. I guess here it was less so because it is a historical picture and I hate to say it, the action sequences in Michael Bay's Pearl Harbor, I got more investment out of at an entertainment level than this. Although I would say this technically I would say is better than Michael Bay's Pearl Harbor because it doesn't have romantic love triangles involved in there. And... I can see why if you watch Pearl Harbor, Michael Bay putting his Bayisms is like, well, this is an event that really happened where a lot of people died. It's kind of could it be viewed in bad taste or you know that weird it's like, huh? Plus, that was really Michael Bay really trying to do Titanic. <laughs> in a way, it was. Although Pearl Harbor, I liked some aspects. To the point that in a way I could watch it because some of the action scenes were entertaining on their own. And Michael Bay does use, there's digital, but he does use a lot of practical. I do like the musical score in that. I like Ben Affleck and even though it was a tired love triangle. I had to be honest, I mean, technically... You would say Midway's a better movie because it's trying to be a bit more accurate. <laughs> I probably got more entertainment out Michael Bay's movie, honestly. I hate to say it. I probably did get more entertainment out of Michael Bay's extravaganza th than this. Whether that's right or wrong, that's how I honestly feel. I granted, this isn't about Pearl Harbor. Pearl Harbor is a part of it, but then it's afterward. But still, it just, with that whole period, uh, yeah, honestly, I would rather watch Michael Bay's Pearl, Har Pearl Harbor. I hate to say it. Because this one, I don't know, just a lot of instances I was just getting disinterested. I mean,. There's some actors I recognize. Oh, there's Dennis Quaid, 
with his very rough voice. But then he has this Martin on and Woody Harrelson, who's the commander in, in chief, or he's the commander of all this, tells Dennis Quaid to go home because he's got this rash on, then we don't see Dennis Quaid anymore. Aaron Eckhart, I like Aaron Eckhart, but it seemed like his stuff was leading to more, and it really didn't because he's landed somewhere where there's uh, Chinese and, and others to help him. And someone even asked him, did you bomb Japan? And then shakes Aaron Eckhart's hand. It seems like those don't lead to more, but then I swear to God, either I blanked out or I went to some trance and I couldn't see anything. But then Aaron Eckhart's character was like never mentioned again. And it made me go, then why the fuck was this even in the movie? It just seemed like such a small part. how important this was I swear I didn't get to see much of it to then make me go then why was this even in the movie because a lot of it it just was either I think it was Patrick Wilson as an intelligence officer talked with Woody Harrelson who's the commander some parts of the Japanese saying they should do this this and this and we're going to do a good job. And then a lot of the, the fighter pilots dive bombing one ship after the other after the other. And then it kind of just all blended together. And I got rather bored. I'll be honest. I got rather bored with this film. And I guess the more I think about it, yeah, this is a bit of a rant because I was fucking bored with this movie. I don't know if it's just because I've seen so many of these World War II pictures that I'm kind of honest fucking tired of seeing World War II movies. If you don't do another war picture, stop doing fucking World War II films. I hate to say it, like other fucking wars you could tackle. I mean, hell, it might be overused, but I'd rather watch another fucking Vietnam movie than a fucking World War II film. Because I can't remember the last Vietnam movie there was. That's, you know, a bigger budget flick. Or I'm sure there's other, like the Korean War. Or some other fucking wars. If you gotta do a war movie. I'm just, I didn't, maybe I'm just getting tired of World War II pictures. Maybe because, like, Roland Emmerich, to be perfectly honest, when I see a Roland Emmerich film, I'm more going towards a fun factor. Whether it be universal soldier or godzilla or independence day or white house down and i don't know why I'm the fucking webcam slowing down because i don't have any other windows open sorry about the microphone i get that this was Roland emerald wanting to do something a bit more serious but i can't really say i got oh it's my stupid fucking window security turning on it's secure i'm glad stop slowing my fucking webcam down but yeah i like the aaron eckhart stuff i thought that would lead to more dennis quaid cool then he disappears because they send him home and he goes home what are you saying okay cool but And, you know, some of these people are stuff Roland Emmerich has worked with before. Like, he worked with Woody Harrelson in, a, I think it was 2012. I'd rather watch 2012. He worked with Dennis Quaid on Day After Tomorrow. I'd rather watch Day After Tomorrow. I just... I'm watching this. I'm going... I know Michael Bay's Pearl Harbor is Michael Bay. But I still got more entertainment value out of that. Good or bad. And to be honest, you know, some, there's some good I, I liked in Pearl Harbor. This, the battle scenes, we got to another almost video game cutscene. And not a bad video game cutscene. Like I was saying, it was like a PS2 game. No, not that bad, but still. That's really my reaction. That's how much I cared about this film. The more I fucking think about it, the more I'm going... And did this movie even do anything? I mean, I want to look it up real quick. 
Does uh, this film seem to come and went like a fucking fart? And it's going to slow the camera down more, so I'm going to look like Matt's headroom for a bit, so bear with me. Should have done this before, but fuck it. Fuck it, we do a live, fuck it. While this loads and takes five minutes to load, I'll clean my glasses. Sorry, Grade B, if you like the film, that's cool. I have nothing against people who like the film. But I don't know, I just... This was a passion project, Roland Emmerich. He had trouble getting financial support. Well, of course, because most of his recent films have not done well. With a production budget of $100 million, it was one of the most expensive independent films of all time because he got the budget from fundraising. I fucking forgot Mandy Moore was in this. Nick Jonas. Nick Jonas, that's not who I think it is, was it? I did, I'm trying to remember, like, did they do anything more with Aaron Eckhart's character? Because I can't fucking remember. Does it seem like he just, he showed up, there was a couple scenes, then he just disappeared period and it seemed like that was going to lead to more. I don't know, some of the... <laughs> Nick Jonas. Oh my god, it was. I didn't even fucking put it together. One of the actors is one of the fucking Jonas brothers. Nick Jonas. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not an aficionado of the Jonas brothers, so I didn't quite recognize I'm like that was one of the Jonas brothers yeah 130 minutes so it's that's two hours and 18 minutes November 8th 2019 I'll be honest I mean I know this review ain't much so I'm just gonna read a little bit here for those who haven't seen the film or don't care to see the film spoilers You have attache intelligence officers discussing U.S. and Japanese positions in the Pacific Ocean during a state function. He's warned by an admiral on the Japanese side that the Japanese oil supply is threatened by the U.S. The Japanese will take immediate action. And then you have the scenes of Pearl Harbor, which we witness, which entered the U.S. into World War II. The film then goes on to briefly show the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Marshalls Gilbert's raids, Doolittle Raid, and the Battle of the Coral Sea. The file describes the planning for the Battle of Midway. See, maybe that's why it was kind of fucking me out, because, yeah, it was briefly showing all this bits here, kind of giving you a Cliff Notes version. I'm like, okay, I think they're going to go back to that later. But no, because... One was February, one was April, one was May, one was, and then about midway was June. So no, it's not going to go back to those. So I just thought it was a weird way of doing the movie. Like if it's called Midway, just focus on the battle of fucking Midway. Not try to do this Cliff Notes version of, of this, all this other stuff. So the Japanese are on strike midway using four available carriers. Intercepting messages concerning the location the Japanese identify as AF. A target in the South Pacific. But one disagrees saying it's the midway. Atoll. And this with the fire pilots. A crashing 
pilot, yeah, I remember this, where it nearly misses the, the terrier's bridge, and then it explodes in the water. Yeah, I just, I can't really say this film did much for me, the more I think about it. It made $56 million in the U.S., made $125 million worldwide, has a 43% on Rotten Tomatoes, revisits a well-known story with modern special effects and a more balanced point of view. I disagree with that. But screenplay isn't quite ready for battle. Cinema Store gets an A, so apparently a lot of people liked it. I mean, when I looked at Roland Emmerich's films, I like Making Contact. Moon 44 was there. Universal Soldier I love is my favorite of his. Independence Day, Enjoy, Godzilla Enjoy, Stargate, I, I don't mind. I have some issues with it, though, so I don't love it. The Patriot, I think it's underrated. See, that's a war film Roland Emmerich did I got much more enjoyment out of. Day After Tomorrow, don't mind. 10,000 BC is his worst one. 2012, I had fun with. White House Down, I enjoyed. Independence Day Resurgence, I would say it's his second worst one. I would, say, I would say this is the third worst one I've seen. Because I found it very forgettable. It's a 6.7. So, yeah, apparently a lot of people liked it. 10 stars from a 26-year Navy veteran. Well, there you go. I mean, if a guy who's a 26-year Navy veteran enjoyed it, I mean, I mean, hey, I mean, this guy, if this guy likes it, well, what can I say? I mean, let me mention this. Yes, the dialogue in the movie is sometimes simple, tired, and trite. A few of the characters are not well developed, particularly the women. It's perfectly appropriate for reviews to criticize elements of movie making. Because of their weaknesses, they should not see midway. Keep in mind that there were similar elements of Spielberg's Lincoln that we considered inaccurate and over the top movie making. So the point I want to make is this. A movie can have elements of poor movie making and yet be an important movie for viewers to watch. Midway is one such film. It depicts a poorly understood event in American history, but one that Americans should be exposed to. The events depicted and the people depicted are real. They really did these things. The bravery was real. Americans need to know this and reviewers who have likely never risked anything in their lives should have the good graces not to steer at those who have. Well, I don't sneer at anything on that. You know, the real people that went through this. And obviously a lot of people are giving it nines and tens, so good on you. But I just, as a movie, I just didn't get that pulled in. I mean, there's easily stuff that could be cut out. Aaron Eckhart, as much as I liked him, all his stuff could have been cut out. Some of the other stuff could have been cut out. Uh, honestly, you didn't even need to showcase the, the Pearl Harbor stuff. Because people know the event. I just really, Roland Emery wanted to have his take on it. Maybe it's to try to showcase what happened and then further the story of Midway, but... I really do think it should have just been about Midway. That would have cut a good chunk of the time out. And uh, I don't know. I just. Hey, I appreciate the people who went through that in reality, but that doesn't mean I'm going to love the film. Otherwise, every film, then that's, if that's the case, then everyone should love Michael Bay's Pearl Harbor because there are real people that risked their lives for Pearl Harbor and but it's not like Pearl Harbor is going to get great A reviews because of real people were involved in that this is a film I just found rather boring when I say I'm tired of World War II movies 
That's not to not people who went through World War II. That's not to not the people who gave their lives. That's why we have documentaries, plenty of documentaries to honor them. Just as a viewer, I can't help but say I'm just tired of World War II movies. And I'm sure there are plenty of wars that no one has ever done a movie on that you could go ahead and showcase. Whether that be good and bad or bad, I don't know. But I mean... Never seen the original Midway. For what I understand, it's even longer than this. So I don't know about that. But... This really let me feel like this was over two hours long. I'm kind of sitting there and I'm like, the effects are very computer digital. There's not a lot of practical effects in this at all. A lot of it looks like a high tech video game. I can't say I got tremendously invested with the characters. I don't know what to say. I, I get there was a passion project for Roland Emmerich. Maybe another director should have done it. Maybe he should have had a couple passes on the editing or the script. Maybe you should have had more of a streamlined, straight and narrow path instead of cutting back and forth to so many fucking characters. Here's Aaron Eckhart. Here's Dennis Quaid. Oh, now he's left. Here's Woody Harrelson. Now here's this. Now here's this. Now here's this. Here's the like, ease down. Like even Pearl Harbor for all of its faults, at least mainly focus on that fucking love triangle, whether you love or hate it. And even now I'm like, eh. it was focusing on something. So made it a bit more, a bit better to, for me to follow. No, I'm not saying this needed a love story thing. No, it didn't. I just, I think there's some stuff you could have cut out of this and wasn't needed. I think some stuff you could have put a bit more practical, like some model work or some stuff that they would do back in the day. Try some stuff out with effects, with practical effects, with model work, with other avenues of technology. You did this with Independence Day, Roland Emmerich, so I know you can do it. But I can watch Independence Day and still marvel, and that's a more fantasy sci-fi. I can still marvel with those. Try that out. So I don't know what else to say. It just wasn't my cup of tea, I guess. So with that said, you know, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.